cutting into the belly of the mackerel. Upon opening it, startling discoveries were made inside. Today, let's dissect a mackerel. I purchased a mackerel from the nearby market. Mackerel is a globally consumed fish for its edibility. The back of the mackerel is bluish in color. Upon closer inspection, the patterns are quite fascinating. These patterns vary among different species of mackerel. The color and patterns on the back serve to deceive predators' eyes above the water's surface as they swim. Hence, fish with blue backs mostly swim near the water's surface. Looking at the mouth, you can see these tiny teeth. Mackerel swiftly swim in the ocean, hunting and consuming small crustaceans, fish, and squid. Inside the mouth, there's also a tongue, used for tasting and pushing food into the mouth. Unlike fish that live their entire lives in one area, mackerel migrate based on the seasons. So, mackerel have a streamlined body and a crescent-shaped caudal fin to help it swim long distances. The crescent shape reduces water resistance, making it efficient for prolonged swimming. Additionally, mackerel has a unique feature called a finlet in front of its caudal fin. This finlet is found in only some fish species, and it helps offset the water flow near the caudal fin, making swimming more efficient for long distances. Furthermore, if you cut into the back of the mackerel's body, do you see this reddish part? This is the red muscle, which contains a high amount of myoglobin that stores oxygen, giving it a reddish hue. Because mackerel swims long distances, it requires a lot of oxygen for its muscles. That's why it has a higher proportion of red muscle in its body. In contrast, fish that don't move much only have white muscle. Fascinating, wow. isn't it? Now, let's proceed to dissect the mackerel and explore its internal structure. If you love mackerel, we recommend not watching this. Looking at the underside of the mackerel, the area in front of the anal fin is the anus. Starting from the anus and cutting upwards, we observed the internal structures. Shockingly, we found a significant number of parasites inside. This is Anisakis. What's more, all these Anisakis are alive. In all my experience with fish dissection, I've never seen this many before. Anisakis are often infected from mackerel's primary prey, includes small crustaceans and squid. So mackerel is one of the fish species with a high prevalence of Anisakis. Shocking, right? Our Anisakis spread throughout the entire body of the mackerel. Anisakis parasit is the internal organs of fish, and when the host dies, they penetrate into the muscles. So, the proportion of Anisakis in the muscles is very low. Although the internal organs are often full of Anisakis, if you cut the muscle and observe it, you won't see many Anisakis. Moreover, Anisakis easily die when exposed to heat. So you don't need to worry when consuming mackerel in grilled or stewed dishes. However, consuming live anisakis can lead to infection. So, be cautious when eating mackerel sashimi. Returning to the topic of mackerel, I intended to show the internal structure of the mackerel in more detail, but due to the presence of anisakis, it's not very pleasant to see. The internal organ arrangement of mackerel is quite similar to that of anchovies. So if you're curious, you can watch a video on anchovy dissection. I'll create a video about the anisakis found in this mackerel for the next episode. If you are interested in anisakis, please watch the video that will be uploaded next. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. I didn't show it to Sebastian because of anisakis.